Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy. Our case today comes again from the realm of GYN pathology, which as you've probably learned is one of my areas of uh, uh, particular interest. <clears throat> the patient is a 17-year-old woman, uh, and she has uh, the uh, syndrome that has been termed the Swire syndrome. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but the reason she comes to our attention is because uh, follow-up ultrasound uh, has shown an abnormality in her pelvis uh, that uh, is going to warrant some further evaluation. So let's first talk about uh, what Swire syndrome is. Uh, so this is a mixture of uh, scenarios that essentially all have the common outcome of a disordered sexual development uh, and failure of uh, gonadal uh, development. Uh, many of the females uh, are 46XY karyotype, uh, but have anatomic female genitalia. Um, and usually these are situations where there's some sort of a gonadal streak with fibrous scarring and the potential for neoplasia. There's a variety of mutations in various foci that can produce this syndrome, as one would expect with the very complex nature of sexual development. Um, and uh, I've listed here a number of those genes, SRY, MAP3K1, NROB1, DHS, DHH, DEAH337, WINT4, and NR5A1. And there probably are several others that could be involved as well. Uh, of course, knowing the specifics of this is more a matter for uh, the uh, geneticists uh, among us um, and those who may need to do genetic counseling. Um, but sufficient to know that there are multiple lesions that can uh, create this situation. So here's a representative ultrasound. Um, and as you can see here, uh, the uh, gonad is uh, somewhat smaller. Uh, than typically uh, would be expected in a 17-year-old. This is probably less than a centimeter in size, maybe two centimeters at most. And you can see this sort of fluffy, uh, white, uh, hyperechoic uh, um, uh, stranding in the tissue uh, that is probably indicative of calcification. So under the microscope, we have uh, a, a picture that corresponds to that. Uh, and as we look here, we can see that uh, there's a lot of this uh, eosinophilic material, sort of pale blue and so forth. Uh, not very many cells in this uh, particular uh, pattern. Uh, and here at higher magnification, we can see that this is uh, calcified. It has sort of a lamellated, almost uh, um, uh, fried egg appearance or, or samoma body type of appearance with these rounded nests with sort of concentric laminations. And then off here towards the periphery, we see that we even get ossification uh, with sort of a loose fibrous marrow formation and uh, maybe a few osteocytes uh, forming as the uh, uh, process continues. Well, so what's going on here as we uh, pull out here and begin to look here at the periphery of this lesion, uh, here's an area where there's maybe a little bit of uh, ongoing cellularity remaining. Uh, we'll find another one up here uh, that will uncover kind of uh, what's uh, going on in these lesions here a little bit better. And here I think we can begin to see that process. So we see, for example, right here, um, these uh, lamellated con uh, concretions surrounded by these uh, very small blue cells um, uh, admixed with them. So this sort of it looks a little bit reminiscent of the uh, Carl Exner type bodies uh, that we see in granulosa cell tumor, or maybe the uh, tubulars, the annular tubules that one sees in uh, uh, scatat, sex cord tumor with annular tubules. Uh, so this looks very much like a sex cord type of uh, proliferation. So what else is going on and the reason why this comes to removal is that these lesions, uh, here we see more of this uh, sex cord tumular with annual, annular tubule type formation. But as we look a little bit more, we see there see these larger cells with uh, clear cytoplasm. Uh, and over here, uh, we see even more of these type cells uh, sort of displacing or pushing aside these 
uh, cells. So looking at high magnification at these cells, we see that they have central, mostly round and slightly enlarged nuclei with uh, some uh, nucleoli present. Uh, here we can see a few more down here with nucleoli. And uh, so we see sort of two cell populations. We have the sex cord uh, like two uh, cells that are forming the tubules. And then we have these large uh, uh, cells with clear cytoplasm that look like immature germ cells, which in fact is what they are. They will stain with uh, PLAP. Uh, and here's a representative section. Uh, also, they'll stain with other germ cell markers like CD117. And here we can see this sort of uh, dual uh, population of cells, uh, some staining very nicely with this uh, uh, material and others uh, uh, not quite so decorated. So a heterogeneous pattern. Um, and if we were to do uh, um, stromal cell markers like uh, calretinin or MART1 or something of that sort, we might also see uh, a differential staining of the uh, stromal component with negative staining of the uh, germ cell component. So based on that, uh, our diagnosis is a gonadoblastoma. Uh, this is a tumor that uh, Dr. Scully first identified before I was even born um, and is characterized as this combination that we've illustrated of sex cord elements and germ cells. Uh, and this is typically found in these dysgenetic gonads, either XO, XY mosaics, or XY dysgenesis, very, very rarely in so-called normal women. Um, of course, um, this is most commonly seen in females, uh, but can occur in some male uh, phenotypes as well. Um, and usually uh, the detection is due to this X-ray or ultrasound feature of the uh, calcification that develops as these uh, cellular areas uh, uh, age or mature, uh, become coalescent and uh, calcified, and thus radiographically evident. In terms of uh, risk and follow-up, uh, obviously the uh, germ cell element is the potentially dangerous one, um, but uh, since these are uh, patients that are usually identified before that uh, develops, uh, prophylactic uh, um, ophorectomy or uh, um, gonadal uh, removal can help to uh, identify these and uh, remove them uh, prior to their becoming uh, uh, widespread or uh, metastatic. So our final find-out diagnosis today is gonadoblastoma, a patient with Swire syndrome, most likely in the, her situation due to a 46XY uh, gonadal dysgenesis. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this uh, foray out into the ocean of gynecologic pathology. Please like this, uh, share with your colleagues, and don't forget to subscribe. Also, a nice shout out to Bryce Olson for uh, sharing some of his uh, great photography. So until next time, thanks for joining us.